I see two people who went through something so tragic to where now they appreciate life way more than they ever expected. I see two conquerors, that's what I see. Week 11 of the 2013 season, an ordinary pregame drill became anything but for Broncos safety, Raheem Moore. We did a certain drill where I'm backpedaling and I zone turn and I break to a 45. And I see my, I feel my leg and I'm like, oh, what is that? Moore, who thrives on being the last line of defense and erasing bad plays, just couldn't keep up. The pain in his leg forced him to see emergency room doctors. He puts his needle in just to check my pressure in my leg, and uh, he said, you know, you're gonna, meet, you're gonna need immediate surgery, you know, and if we don't get to the surgery now, Raheem, you can lose your leg, or, you know, you, if you, you can pass away if you'd wait, what, four hours from now? And I remember taking the anesthesia, and all I prayed to God was that I just wake up, you know, and live. You know, I want to just live. If I can't play football anymore, it's okay, you know. Doctors diagnosed Raheem with acute compartment syndrome. If a muscle swells too much within the fixed volume of a compartment, pressure restricts the blood flow. And as blood flow decreases, the cells without nourishment start to die, destroying muscle tissue and nerves, which can lead to amputation and potentially death. I told him immediately, I said, there's no one that's going to amputate my leg, OK? Because I'm going to get ready for these Patriots next week. So I heard my mom down the hallway say that I'm out six to eight weeks. I just broke down. Like, are you kidding me? Six and a half months after Raheem's surgeries, Tyson Golding was running the Steamboat Springs 10K when cramping in his right calf turned into excruciating pain. A Colorado native and diehard Broncos fan, Tyson had followed Raheem's story. And on the drive back to Denver with his wife, Heather, Tyson couldn't help but wonder if he'd suffered something similar. We went into the urgent care, and I'm so glad that that doctor knew. He, he said, you got to get to the hospital. You got to go now. And if I'd have gone another day, another two days, who knows how much I would have lost, you know? It could be anywhere from my foot, my, the lower half of my leg, or my life. Tyson underwent four surgeries in the next 10 days, and despair began to set in. Attempting to raise his spirits, Tyson's family reached out to the Broncos, hoping for a call, a text, or an email from the Denver safety. But Raheem did one better. You know, they said he might not live, and I'm like, whoo, this is giving me a flashback, right? So and I said, okay, what's the address? Half hour later, Raheem's in my room. You were at the hospital 30 minutes later. More like 10. I was flabbergasted. He didn't have to do that. What did he say to you during that visit? Stay strong. You can do this. Stay strong. He said, it's going to be a lot of work, but you can do this. I mean, you're going to be fine. I was laying in the bed exactly like you were. Through successful operations and rigorous physical therapy, Tyson's leg was saved. And while he can do most things, Tyson continues to work to build his strength. Moore returned to the football field stronger than before and punctuated his recovery by making two interceptions week one against the Colts. It was like being reborn. You know when a baby come out and they just start crying and just scrambling everywhere? Well, that's how it was versus the Colts. Pass through the hands of Fleeter, and Raheem Morris got his second interception. The two men stayed in contact through text messages following their multiple surgeries. And during practice on September 18th, Raheem and Tyson were reunited for the first time since Moore's hospital visit. You looking all fresh, looking healthy? I don't know. Up nice and walking. How are you doing? Man? Everything good? Yeah. I got a little present for you, man. I got some oh. gloves right there. Thank you. Two men bonded for life, wearing similar scars, a reminder of the struggle they embraced, both separately and together. I just want to thank him. I 
head. I know I did when he was there, but <clears throat> I, I don't think he quite understood what it meant to me. I appreciate everything you did, man. It, was, it meant a lot to us that you Most came definitely. Out. I mean, it meant a lot to me. You know how it is when you in the bed, you know it. If you're gonna walk or live, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough thing to go through, but yeah. you did it. Why was it so important for you to go there and be there in person? Because you never know how you can help somebody and bless somebody. When I went there, I don't know how much, it, how much it helped him, but I know by me praying over him and telling him my story, to like, okay, you know what, if Raheem can do it, if Raheem is practicing it at full speed, I can do the same thing.